All right. Well, we have reached the part of the evening we're going to bring on a big star. Are you excited? I said a big star. Are you excited? Boy, what a jaded, what a jaded Hollywood crowd. This is oh, a big star. We've seen them before. Well, before we do, I'd like to offer a personal opinion. I know that is out of character. But I hear the term brave actor a lot, especially around award season. And uh, I just like to say, I don't think there's any such thing as a brave actor, a brave performance. Okay, you put on an ugly nose <laughs> for a movie. It's not like when the movie ends, you're still ugly. That's not brave. You know what brave is? Sean Penn, George Clooney, Julia Roberts, Bono, people who actually go to third world trouble spots. That's what a brave actor is. People say to me all the time, Bill, you're so brave. No, I've never been east of La Brea. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is that when you go to these places, you're not a celebrity. Heat does not know or care that you're a celebrity. Sandstorms don't care if you're a celebrity. Flies don't care if you're a celebrity. Uh, militias, terrorists, they don't know and care if you're a celebrity. Dysentery and malaria, they don't care if you're a celebrity. All right, Julia Roberts first visited Haiti in 1995 as a goodwill ambassador for UNICEF and was struck both by the country's poverty and the resilience and hope of its people. So it's no surprise that after the devastating earthquake, she was one of the first to join the MTV telethon in January 2010 that raised $100 million for the victims. So please welcome, right now, the magnificent Julia Roberts, ladies and gentlemen. My heart was beating so fast that Bill might say something that wasn't nice. <laughs> Thank you for not doing that. Um, the scope of her compassion is nearly incomprehensible. The depth of her intellect, staggering. Her sheer will is quite simply mighty. Cheryl Mills is a lawyer, administrator, corporate executive, and government official. It sounds so cool. And she really just couldn't be any cooler, this lady. She currently serves as counselor and chief of staff to Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. She is leading the State Department's Global Hunger and Food Security Initiative and Diplomacy and Development Aids in Haiti. Cheryl Mills seems to be the kind of person who cannot turn her back on injustice or inaction. She has tirelessly devoted herself to Haiti since 2009 and now, as Haiti needs her, and all of us most, she has, true to form, increased the seriousness of her devotion, traveling there on average once a month to oversee the situations firsthand. At times when others have seen only problems, when only what hasn't been done gets talked about, she remains steadfast and optimistic in Haiti's progress and continued forward movement. Cheryl relayed that when she first began her work in Haiti, someone once told her, you cannot chase needs in Haiti because Haiti's needs are too great. You must chase opportunities. Cheryl Mills not only chases these opportunities, she creates them. We live in a world with so many troubles and pains. It is often hard to know where to begin. It feels impossible to believe that we can really make a difference. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, patience and fortitude conquer all things. Cheryl is a shining example of that kind of belief, an example that one person can make an immeasurable difference. And I cannot end um, my time up here without also noting what I think is her really crowning achievement, that she is raising seven-year-old twins, Luca and Indigo, something that we have in common because I do the same thing. It is the joy of my life to have three children to devote myself to and raise. Um, the fact that she does this and in addition to that helps to solve the world's problems is just blows my mind. I think you're tremendous. I'm so happy to be here for you tonight. And now we're going to watch some footage.
I've directed my administration to launch a swift, coordinated, and aggressive effort to save lives and support the recovery in Haiti. Good afternoon and welcome to the Department of State. My name is Cheryl Mills. I have the honor of serving on the Interim Haiti Recovery Commission. What happened in, in Haiti transcends most of what we could ever imagine at any given time. It's as if the United States, in a terrible instant, lost nearly 8 million people. We still have about a million people in tents. That's certainly better than 1.6 million people. We still have about 9 million cubic meters of rubble that needs to be removed. Well, progress happens over time. We have a long way to go, and it needs to be done right. It needs to be done in a way that keeps faith with the Haitian people and the enormous sacrifice and loss that you have suffered. Rather, we must focus on how we grow those economies so people can grow and so they can choose their own future. This industrial park represents our commitment to working differently, not only here in Haiti, but around the world. At its core, our measurements are really about, are we actually improving the lives of the Haitian people? Is their life better? The new beginning gives everyone hope. It gives hope in Haiti, in the diaspora community, and in the international community. Haiti can lead the way, and will lead the way, with a strong vision for its future. But we are committed to Haiti, both as a partner in the long run, but also, more importantly, to its own economic prosperity and political stability so they one day can be the partner to others that others are being to them. So I hope that I see all of you all in the race for chasing all of Haiti's opportunity so they get the future they deserve. It is an honor to be here, an honor to receive this award from the Cinema of Peace, and it is an honor to be among so many people who are giving so much to Haiti, whether those people are people for whom Haiti is home, like the foreign minister who is here tonight, and I know former Prime Minister Belrive is here as well, whether it is not like those like Regine for whom Haiti is their ancestral home, or whether it's for people like Brad Horowitz and certainly Sean Penn and his organization, H. JPHRO, for whom Haiti is their adopted home, there are so many ways in which they are giving to this country, and there is no better company to find yourself in. If life is truly what you make it, then Haiti has an extraordinary future, not only for what they make of it for themselves, but what so many people feel compelled to make for Haiti out of themselves to help Haiti reach its own dreams. I get up every day wishing, wondering, worrying, and working for Haiti, and I am just one person of legions of people who get up every day, both on that island and off, who do the same thing. When I first began, as the Secretary said, it was back in 2009 when she asked me to take Haiti as one of the areas because for her it was going to be an abiding commitment of this administration. I kept going to Haiti because I found no more special gift than the chance to be able to actually help someone else try and fulfill their dreams. In many ways, one of the things I've really learned is that when someone gives you that gift, they're placing an enormous amount of trust in your hands, and every day you have to get up and earn and re-earn that trust that you have to remember that you've been given a gift each day, and that gift is not yours to keep. It's rather yours to nurture. So I'm in awe, not only of the honorees tonight, but I'm particularly in awe of those who do that so well. I am in awe of Sean and his organization, who have really been uh, just an extraordinary example for so many people in Haiti, whether they have been there for 20 minutes, 20 days, or 20 years. The kind of commitment and passion was a good reminder of what it is that you can do, that you can actually be the difference, that makes the difference, that you can actually be a champion, even if you are there from just a new beginning, that you can be the champion that sets a whole new standard for everyone else to have to strive for. I'm grateful for the chance that I've had to work with some of the other honorees who are up here tonight and to hear the music of folks who are celebrating Haiti, and I just want to say thank you. I'm, I am overwhelmed. Uh, which, for those of you who really would know me, know I rarely am and always have something to say. So I know I'll pay for this tomorrow. 
but I do really believe if I am able to give kind of one eighth of myself uh, on behalf of myself and on behalf of this country, that certainly organizations like JPRO have done one eighth of the love and the respect and the effectiveness and the commitment, then your tax dollars will be well spent. And I will have brought honor not only to our country, I certainly will have brought peace inside my heart. So thank you. Thank you to Cinema Peace for this honor. And thank you to Haiti for the gift of having the chance to serve.